Hello everyone, this is Nela for the Curly Hair Project speaking and today I will be giving some tips on how to help your child with autism uh, take a shower more easily. Um, I'm pretty sure every parent, whether you have uh, neurotypical children or children with autism or just highly sensitive children, will have to drag their child at one time in their lives, kicking and screaming into the shower. Now, for children with autism, uh, this will happen a bit more often. Uh, first and foremost, because a shower is a very complex sen sensory thing. And secondly, because hygiene isn't on their top priority lists. Um, showers are sensory, very complex, as I just mentioned, because you have the raindrops coming down, the water drops coming down, excuse me. You have several scents. Um, you have the water temperature, you have the lights in the bathroom, you have the echoing of the sound in the bathroom, which is very different from any other room in your house. And the fact that hygiene is not top priority to your child with autism might make it difficult for them to shower regularly. Um, I want to explain to you the sensory impact this has on your child. Um, when I step into the shower, I can't just step into the shower. When I do do that, um, I will actually scream in pain because of the sensation of the water drops hitting my skin is so overwhelming, it's actually painful. Um, how can I compare this? You know, when it's winter and there's snow outside and you've been playing in the snow or you've been making a snowman with your children without any gloves on, your hands kind of go numb. And when you come inside and they start to warm up, you get this really sensation, this painful sensation of pins and needles in your hands. Um, and it's, it's, it's this very overwhelming sensation, it can get very painful. Now, that's how it feels for me to step into a shower that isn't adjusted to how I sensory like it. It's just incredibly painful. It's just incredibly painful. And mix that together with the really bright lights in your bathroom, because it usually tends to have really bright lights. The echo of the sound of the water going, plus the movements you make, and the different smells of shampoo and soap is an awful lot to take in and hardly relaxation. Most people who are neurotypical will enjoy their bathroom time. When they take a nice hot bath or a nice relaxing shower, they can actually really soak it in, no pun intended, and really make it about relaxation. Whereas for someone with autism, this takes an awful lot of more work to actually make it a pleasant experience. Um, children with autism also tend to have other things high on their top priority list than hygiene. They tend to get lost in their hyperfocuses, like um, when they're playing with their favorite toy, they tend to just focus on that and lock out everything else around them. Or when they're reading a book by their favorite writer or favorite author, they will just completely focus on that and forget that it's actually shower time and also not find it so important that they need to shower because they're so completely lost in that book. Um, so how can you as a parent or even as a partner help your loved one remind them that it's shower time and also make it a pleasant experience? So first things first. The important part of this is to remind yourself that you need to bring down the sensory input. This is really crucial to bring down that sensory input. And this might be difficult because bathrooms are technically not um, made for someone who's so incredibly sensitive to light and sound and touch. But there are a number of tips that can actually help you with this. Um, here are some tips that I find helpful. Now, it's not because I find them helpful that your child will find them, find them helpful. So it might be that you have to check different websites or try different things. Uh, remind yourself that it might be a long road, so you can have to take different steps toward working yourself up to making shower a pleasant experience. Number one is turn on the shower before you put your child in it. Find right water temperature. This is really crucial. I find this so important. Um, beforehand, I had a partner who would turn up in the shower for me and I would step under it, but it would be way too hot or way too cold. And 
people with autism don't have in-betweens, it's either this or that, but nothing in between. So it would be too extreme for me and it would just completely overwhelm me. So what you can help is, what you can do is turn open uh, the water tap, let the water flow and have your child feel it. Just start at medium tepid water. You can always turn it down or always turn it up a bit to your child liking, but don't put your child underneath that straight away. Um, if your child wants to move under there slowly, adjusting to water dripping on their skin, let them. It's better to do it that way than have to put them underneath there, kicking and screaming, in pain, because for them it's a really traumatizing experience if you do it that way. Um, because of technology, you can also play with different shower heads. You know, you have the ones that have um, water coming down like a bit of a waterfall or with re really soft water rays. So you can play with that. If your child really thinks that one is painful, switch to another one. You have shower heads that can, you can adjust different stands in actually. So that might be really, really helpful. And those are those come really cheap as well. And most of the shower heads you can put on any type of hose. So um, those things can really be helpful and really cheap to use. Um, make your bathroom sensory pleasant. And I know this is quite difficult um, because when you step into a bathroom and most people do their makeup, do their shaving, they're brushing their teeth, so they need bright lights and a, a nice sterile environment that you can clean off quickly. Um, so make it more sensory pleasant. Make sure there's like a light dimmer present or that you have lights that you can tone down. Uh, maybe put an extra light in the bathroom that is just really soft so you don't have to use the main lights. Um, you can also dampen the noise by uh, hanging towels here and there so the noise doesn't echo as much uh, as, as it does. Um, you can also dim the light by hanging a towel over the main light or hanging a sheet over the main light. So you can play with that. Uh, don't use candles. I mean, you're still you're still showering with kids. So if you're an adult, you can use candles. If you have kids, don't use candles unless you have those fire safety free candles. Um, use different toys. You know, find out different toys that your child likes that they can hold while they're in the shower that makes it pleasant for them. Keep in mind that certain smells or scents can be very triggering for your child. So finding the right shampoo can be a very long way, but it will last you as well. Once your child has that shampoo, don't be afraid to buy it in bulk because you know, you'll be safe with that one. The same goes for soap. I use um, oil, Nivea oil, because it's so good for my skin and the scent is really minimal and I really like that. So finding out which one you, which uh, your child like, likes or which one your Aspie partner likes can be tricky, but it will also last you a very long time. Um, when it comes to stepping out of the shower and drying your child off, I prefer really soft uh, towels and I don't go rubbing off quite quickly because it still hurts my skin because my skin is really sensitive from uh, the shower itself. So you might just want to like, really softly tap or pat it off or let your child do it yourself with your instructions. Know that this is not a miracle solution. Uh, if your child does have issues with showering, it takes a while to find out what it is that makes them like shower. But the main thing you need to keep in mind is that showering is sensory, such an explosion of things that it becomes quickly very overwhelming and keep in mind that that is very real to your child. That's absolute reality. Don't just tell your child to get over it because it will remain a sensory explosion because they just cannot filter that kind of senses out. Those were my tips. Uh, I hope you found them helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or you need more information, you can always check our website at The Curly Hair Project. You can always like us on Facebook 
or you can always consult our other video vlogs. I hope, hope you all have a nice day. Bye!